Ministerial visit to the Chief Secretary to the Treasury will be in Gibraltar on Friday. Spain's border upgrade revealed four lanes into Spain, six into Gibraltar. And GSPCA chairperson resigns in protest, saying the system has failed abused animals. Good evening. The Chief Secretary to the Treasury, Danny Alexander, will be visiting Gibraltar this week. The Liberal Democrat is second only to the Chancellor at the Treasury and the most senior cabinet minister to visit Gibraltar since former Defence Secretary Liam Fox in July 2011. Mr Alexander is expected to arrive at lunchtime on Friday and will have meetings with the Chief Minister and Deputy Chief Minister at No. 6 Convent Place. He'll also be attending a reception hosted by the government at the Garrison Library to celebrate Europe Day and one by the convent in the evening. Mr Alexander will be campaigning on behalf of the Liberal Democrats ahead of their European election campaign. On Saturday, he'll be at Casemets for the start of the Commonwealth Baton Relay and is expected to go for a walk down Main Street with the Chief Minister. A dramatic 5 million euro overhaul of the Spanish side of the frontier will see four lanes of traffic to enter Spain and six lanes of traffic to enter Gibraltar and is expected to be completed by the end of the year. This is according to the Spanish newspaper La Verdad, who have published architects' designs commissioned by the Customs Border Agency. Following a visit by its experts last September, the European Commission recommended to Spain that it revises border arrangements to make the best use of Spain and invited Spain's authorities to make use of European funding for this project. The Commission's letter to Spain last November observed that the six lanes of traffic on the Gibraltar side converted to just two on the Spanish side, one of which was a red channel for Guardia Civil to check for tobacco smuggling. It's also noted there were only two lanes of traffic in the access road heading into Gibraltar. The Commission asked Spain to make changes in order to improve traffic flow across the border and said it would make funding available for this purpose. The improvements on Gibraltar's side have been well documented. They include an automated queue management system and security cameras to monitor traffic flow as well as the volume of pedestrian access. However, Spain has been somewhat silent on its side of things until now. A document prepared for the Agencia Tributaria, Spain's border control agency, and obtained by La Verdad, lays out the plans for a 5 million euro investment which largely follows the Commission's recommendations. The first phase, a review and reinstallation of electricity works, has apparently already been completed. The next phase will see the demolition of the existing police quarters. A garage with vehicle scanning equipment will be built in its place. A third phase will see the construction of purpose-built facilities for the Policia Nacional. And this will be followed by the main event a transformation of the traffic management network. Four lanes will be created to enter Spain, two green and two red channels. And six channels of traffic will be created to enter Gibraltar. There are also plans for new customs buildings as well as a new paved pedestrian access. One of the last phases will see the construction of police control marquees and new parking facilities. According to the plans, the new system will separate regular vehicle access from those vehicles marked for inspection and should improve traffic flow. Meanwhile, the Spanish Workers in Gibraltar Association, Aztec, has hit out at what it describes as a new double filter initiative at the frontier similar to those put in place during the 1990s. The workers claim these double filter inspections are being exercised by the Guardia Civil and are causing further aggravation and unnecessary delay for frontier workers. Now, the opposition has labelled the chief minister a political hypocrite following the government's latest statement on the power station. In that statement, the GSLP Liberals claims the 30-metre chimneys of the power station the GSD intended to build at Lothbury Barracks would have ruined Gibraltar's skyline. The opposition accuses Fabian Picardo of putting his political weight behind a huge stadium at Europa Point that will completely spoil one of the last open spaces in Gibraltar and an area of significant environmental heritage and cultural importance. It says this is despite two of his own ministers, Joseph Garcia and John Cortés, having expressed reservations about the project. 
The GSD recalls it was the last GSLP government who built the eyesore, that is, the refuse incinerator near Europa Point, which was only operational for a couple of years and cost the taxpayer over £20 million. And in response, the government has accused the opposition of taking politics in Gibraltar to a new low. In a further statement, number six says the considerable difference between the Lathbury Barracks power station and the proposed stadium at Europa Point is that the latter planning process is being conducted in a transparent and open manner in front of the press and the public. The government says the level of public scrutiny that exists today is light years ahead of the closed system that was inherited from the GSD. And continuing from yesterday's war on words on the housing remedial works, the government says the opposition is totally incorrect in saying it cost the GSD government over £20 million to put right poor workmanship in estates such as Westside and Brimpton. Number six says uh, as the contra contractor was taken to court and lost the case and had to pay for the repairs instead of the government. This follows the government statement yesterday claiming that housing projects built by the previous administration could cost £15 million. The government says the opposition has no grasp of the facts and should learn that silence is sometimes the most prudent course of action. Now, in other news, in the ongoing multi-million pound Maracha fraud trial, Benjamin Maracha says he cannot recall what exactly happens to £3.5 million belonging to a client of the firm. A former managing partner of collapsed law firm Maracha & Co answered questions from lead prosecutor John McGuinness QC today in the Supreme Court. Today, the Supreme Court heard that in 2008, Mr. Magna, a millionaire businessman and client of collapsed law firm Marasha & Co, asked Benjamin Marasha to invest £3.5 million in GAM, Global Asset Management. But the firm wasn't able to do so after allegedly using the money elsewhere. Benjamin Marasha says he cannot recall what exactly happened to the £3.5 million that belonged to Jim Magna. The former managing partner of the collapsed law firm was answering questions from the lead prosecutor. John McGuinness QC asked Mr. Marasha why he had spent Jim Magna's money on holidays and his brother's mortgage, and if Mr. Magna was made aware of what was happening. Benjamin Marasha replied, I don't recall, I doubt it. The money must have been in a pool account. That's how it worked. Mr. McGuinness QC spent some time talking through a series of emails between Benjamin Marasha and Jim Magna. The Crown maintains that over a period of time, Marasha and Co. did not have sufficient monies in its client accounts to pay monies due to the millionaire client. But, Mr. Marasha says, Magna knew what the position was. This was a commercial transaction. Benjamin, Isaac and Solomon Marasha, together with Leanne Turnbull, have pleaded not guilty to conspiracy to defraud. The trial continues. Chairperson of the Gibraltar Society for the Protection of Cruelty to Animals, Francesca Lee, has resigned in protest at what she describes as a system which fails to protect animals from abuse. In a statement to GBC, she says she can no longer work in a society which turns a blind eye to animal abuse and hopes a new chair and committee will be listened to and respected in the future. Mrs Lee says she's been promised many things over the years, but things have only got worse and abused animals are being systematically returned to abusive owners. Joining me in the studio now is the junior representative of the association, Tina Lee. Ms. Lee, thank you for joining us on the studio tonight. Uh -huh. um, first of all, I'd, I'd like to ask you uh, what your remit is, what, uh, what uh, your mission statement is. Uh, the GSPCA, it's, it's existed in Gibraltar for many years. What is it exactly that you do? Our aim was to actually be the RSPCA for Gibraltar. Mm -hmm. You report an animal in abuse, we go in, we take it out, we give it a new life. But, as you've already read, that's not been the case for many, many years. Now you, you're, uh, uh, you're a number of volunteers working 24-7. You're a registered charity. Uh, it's not always easy for you, is it? No, everyone seems to think it's, you know, you just get a dog, you love it, you cuddle it, you give it mm -hmm. little bottles of milk, and it's not the case. It's hard, hard work. And when you see an animal that an inspector has taken away from someone abusing it day and night, being returned to the owner. It's, it's a form of injustice. Mm. And uh, do your volunteers uh, suffer abuse themselves at the hand of uh, abusive uh, pet owners? We have had a few cases where 
one of our inspectors has almost been severely hurt. She's been put in a massive amount of danger. Mm -hmm. And due to the fact that it's only the police protecting us, yes. if they're not on the scene at the time, yes. there is nothing that we can do. Is animal abuse a big problem in Gibraltar? Massively. Because Gibraltar is such a small place, the abuse is bigger, believe it or not. In mm. the UK, you have adverts for the RSPCA and it says, yeah. you know, please contribute, help us. When I was younger, I didn't believe that. I thought, no, you've got enough money, there yes. isn't that much abuse. And then I came here. There is so much abuse and hardship. I walked down the street the other day and saw someone I knew kick a dog in the face. And when I said, what are you doing? He just said, oh, I'm teaching it to stay. Okay. and and. Uh how do these incidents get reported to you? Are these concerned citizens that, uh, that are aware of something that's happening and, and phone you? Mainly, yes. And what powers do you have to protect those animals? There is a law against animal abuse in Gibraltar, although, again, as you've already stated, it's not really being practiced. Enforced. It's not mm. being enforced. So what would you like to see? Or what would you like to see happen? Ideally, no animal abuse in the world, but... Yes, but, but in terms of uh, legislation, enforcement, uh, what would you like to see in Gibraltar? A better enforcement. I mean, animals are... They're creatures, they have feelings. Mm. If you put an electric shock collar on them, they will feel pain. Put it on yourself first and see if you would like that just for not sitting down. Ideally, we would like up-to-date laws in the government, um, being able to just think if an animal is in danger, we can walk in and take it away from the situation. Okay. And do you feel you're, you're being uh, listened to as an association? Not at all, to be honest. Um, recently, I have emailed a few tabloids in order to sort of um, mm. get a rough idea, get yeah. some publicity for yes. the GSPCA, you know, we're a small animal welfare charity and we just want to be seen. The more people that see us, the more animals we can help save and we won't listen to at all. Okay. Well, Tina Lee, thank you very much for joining us in the studio tonight. All the best with your cause. No Coming up after the break, the GRA to review the use of personal data by mobile apps to identify privacy issues. Stylish, multifunctional bedrooms at Interbuild. Creating living spaces that work for you. Interbuild. Find us at 12 New Harbours, Gibraltar. King's Bastion Leisure Centre, located within an 18th century fortress, perfectly combines its modern interior with tradition, heritage and history. Facilities include a 14-lane bowling alley, restaurant, bar and cafeteria, an amusement arcade, pool tables, ice skating rink, two cinemas, gymnasium, disco and youth area. The ideal venue for all types of corporate events, celebrations and social functions. King's Bastion Leisure Centre, Queensway, Gibraltar. The three little pigs decided it was time to sell their homes. The first little pig overpriced his house. It didn't sell, and he blamed the big bad wolf. The second little pig tried to sell his house using social media. All he got was time wasters. The third little pig listed exclusively with Bentley. His house sold, and Bentley paid all his removal costs within Gibraltar, too. For all those clever little pigs out there, contact Bentley Real Estate. To list your property with Bentley, call 200-43-880 or log on to BentleyEstates.gi and forget about the big bad wolf. Are you looking to improve your home? Gajero Semads offer a select range of quality sofas, beds and bathrooms on display in our showroom. Visit us today and see for yourself. When it comes to your home, think Gajero Semads.
Good morning, Grand Home Care. Come speaking. Grand Home Care gives you a helping hand. Specialised services aimed at helping those in need of home care or assistance, personal care, practical support and housekeeping, physiotherapy, acupuncture, on-call GP visits, night sits and Alzheimer's and dementia care. Grand Home Care staff are carefully screened, qualified and have a strong background in caregiving. Call 200 655 or visit ghc.gi for more details. Grand Home Care. Support for independent living. Grand Home Care is a private home care provider and is a member of the UK Home Care Association. Europort Office Suites, Gibraltar's most prestigious office building. Smart offices for smart businesses. And Europort Residential, Atlantic Suites serviced apartments. Boutique studio, one and two bedroom suites. Fully equipped for short to long stays with regular room cleaning, free internet, 24-hour security and use of Atlantic Suites gym, spa, pool and gardens. Ideal for modern professionals or families visiting Gibraltar. Europort. Welcome back to Newswatch. The Gibraltar Regulatory Authority will be reviewing the use of personal data by mobile apps to identify privacy issues. As Data Protection Commissioner, it will work together with other privacy enforcement authorities around the world in the 2014 sweep by the Global Privacy Enforcement Network. This will take place between the 12th and 18th of this month. Michael Viltran spoke to the GRA's Information Rights Manager, Bradley Dosso. Essentially, um, all regulators are working together and regulators from all over the world will essentially be downloading mobile applications, um, using them and reviewing the information that they provide to users about the, the information or personal data that they obtain, how they use it. And also, um, we'll be reviewing the, permis the permissions or, cons or the consent they seek from, from the users themselves. Um, and this is, these are fundamental points of data protection. One other point which uh, we'll, we will also be focusing on is actually looking at the information that um, is obtained by the app in comparison to the functionality of the app. So for example, um, a mobile application which is used um, or which provides the facility to use a, a smartphone as a flashlight um, should not necessarily um, track uh, your, your location because there's no need to actually um, you, there's no need for that, um, um, for using the flashlight. Well, in this climate now of ever-increasing uh, phone apps that people keep downloading for particular companies or for different reasons every time they get a new smartphone, uh, is this something that the GRA has been looking into for a while now, making sure that people uh, understand and are educated in uh, the amount of information they do give away? I know that you have to write a, a password in order to be able to download these apps uh, many times. Is that something that you've been uh, wanting to look at now for a while? Well, in, in general, I mean, we are engaging with uh, the wider um, regulatory community in, in a, an awareness-raising campaign on, on, on the use of digital, digital technology. And um, this project actually fits in nicely with that. Um, raising awareness is actually fundamental and part of um, the objectives of this initiative. So definitely, I mean, we will be in encouraging the um, public to actually um, you know, use these apps responsibly and actually try and identify what information the app will be using about um, obtaining about uh, the users. Will it, will it seek to access your, your contacts list, um, your photographs and so on, and if so, ask yourself why. So hopefully by raising awareness um, about pri privacy in general, people will uh, be, be more responsible when, when using mobile applications. 
And of course, with the sweep, there'll be a lot of data being collated that will then be put together and distributed at a later date. So how does this process work exactly? Well, next week, um, all regulatory authorities will actually be performing the sweep. Um, then we will be collectively pulling together all the information, which will be analyzed over the summer. Um, results, we hope, will be issued uh, in autumn. Um, but this is an initial uh, step. Um, and once we analyze data, we'll, we'll uh, uh, determine further, further engagement or, or regulatory action if, if necessary. But at this, this stage, it's, it's just um, info and this is primarily an information gathering um, stage. A Gibraltarian on holiday in Thailand has spoken of how she felt the ground move during an earthquake in the region yesterday. Measuring 6.3 on the Richter scale, it caused damage to some buildings and roads and one person was killed. Speaking to GBC, Yolanda Pilcher spoke of how high-rise buildings nearby were being evacuated. Yesterday at about 6 o'clock, we started walking down to the market and we stopped at one of the shops. And all of a sudden, it was, you know, like the floor moved and it felt really weird. We, it, it seemed as if we were on a boat. We were looking at something in the shop with the attendant and then when it stopped, we all looked at one another, like thinking, you know, what, what's that? What's happened? How weird? Because we thought, you know, some of these places are a bit unsteady, that maybe there was something wrong. But we all looked and everybody went out in, into the street. And this is, they were talking about earthquakes. This week in culture, we find out about an upcoming musical by local theatre company Lol Productions. The Good Father is an original comedy that draws its inspiration from the people and places of Gibraltar's past. It takes place in the 1950s and it place, takes place in the marketplace. Um, and I mean, I couldn't say too much what it is about, but I can say that there are a few surprises. And the first half of the show is mostly based on the marketplace, and then in the second half we have, you know, a different setup, and it's going to be, it's going to be good, hopefully. It's a big production with a lovingly detailed set and a large cast of characters, and a lot of effort has gone into putting it all together. Yeah, we've got about 20 people, I think and we've been rehearsing for about eight months now, so you know, it's, it can get stressful at times, but I guess that comes with the, you know, the whole thing of it all. I can say that the set takes a lot of work. Yeah, my mom's taken like months and months to do them, and we've got all the things at home everywhere. It's crazy, but at the end of the day, I mean, you can see for yourself, it's really, really good, and a lot of effort goes into it, definitely, yeah. The Good Father tells a very Gibraltarian story, with well-known songs adapted to reflect local themes in the popular tradition of Yanito comedy. We do base it on Gibraltar, and that's what people like to hear. You know, we do songs for every generation. The lyrics appeal to everyone and people can relate to, to the lyrics, not because we base it about Gibraltar and things that happen in Gibraltar and all the jokes are Gibraltarian jokes, it's all based on here. There's a lot of songs and you know, we take part obviously in all the show and uh, there's actually a really good song about the evacuation that is uh, more on a serious note and uh, we finished the first half with that and I think it will touch upon many Gibraltarians uh, because even though the first half, or not the first and second half of the show is a lot about the comedy and the music on the shows, it's really funny. This last song is uh, very dear to the heart to many of us in Gibraltar. So I think it is definitely one to watch. The Good Father premieres at the Inces Hall this Thursday at eight in the evening and runs till next Wednesday the 14th of May. Tickets cost £12 and are available from Accessory World in the ICC or at the door. Just before we go tonight, a reminder of our top story. The Chief Secretary to the Treasury, Danny Alexander, will be visiting Gibraltar this week. The Liberal Democrat is second only to the Chancellor at the Treasury and the most senior Cabinet Minister to visit Gibraltar since former Defence Secretary Liam Fox in July 2011. Mr Alexander will be attending a number of functions, including receptions hosted by the government and the convent, and will be walking down Main Street on Saturday morning.
that's all from the news team this evening. Thanks for watching. Good night.